For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to Outdoors Outdoors with me, Mike. Today I'm giving you guys a bit of a sort of a pitching slash review video on a product from Outdoor Revolution. So here I've got with me is the Outdoor Revolution Pronto 4 Windbreak. It's a windbreak that's basically designed to be quick erect, you can put up nice and simple and easy, um, but also have a bit more versatility with as well. I've also done a pitching video on the compact version, so a smaller three panel version, but this is the sort of the original, if you will. And again, we've got a review video comparing the contrasting between the two. So you want to see how uh, one compares to another, size-wise, space-wise, then that's worth a watch. So the joys of it is because it's quick erect, so it's very quick, simple to put up. The four panels interconnected to one another and it's got a kind of this sort of fast insta clip kind of uh, sort of section to it. So if I unravel the guy ropes, you almost get these kind of hub points. Oops, someone's tidies up like an absolute demon. There we go. Open that up. So what you want to do is also sort of kind of spread out the hub points initially. They're almost sort of big long kind of rectangle shape. So if we open it out. I tend to find it's easier to do it upside down, just that way you're not sort of risking anything. And yet again, having it kind of almost on the floor means that it doesn't matter what the wind's doing, you're always kind of in control. It makes a lot of difference if you actually untangle the guy ropes. So, like I said, it's a four panel windbreak. And you can see, like I said, they're all interconnected. What I'm gonna do is sort of work from one side to another I find, like I said, doing it this way, it's a bit easier, you're in more control, and you can just sort of push it down. You haven't got to worry about it kind of pronging out upon you at all. And again, if it's a windier weather, like I said, you haven't got to worry about it flying about, but once it's kind of in that kind of pre-shaped, you can then quite literally just flip it up, position it kind of however you want to, and because they're sort of fixed, it's almost like a hinge. Like I said, you create your sort of enclosure. It sits quite nice and neatly to the ground. So again, you've got kind of, you can create this kind of wrap around kind of feel. Get that out a little bit more. So you've got that wrap around feel right around your sort of points. So you create your perfect sort of sheltered area. Depending on whether it's windy or not at the moment, obviously today is not too bad. You can go about sort of kind of going out just initially to get a sort of sort of well freestanding and a bit more support so it's not flapping about in the wind. Because today's okay, I'm gonna take advantage of that and insert some additional poles that go into a sleeve just to give it a bit more structure. What you also find is actually it keeps the kind of main parts of it quite taut as well. All the poles are basically the same, so it's nice and easy, but you do have on the pole itself a larger spike and a smaller spike. The larger spike is designed to go directly into the ground to sort of secure the windbreak down into the floor. So what you can do is just kind of push it down into the ground like so, and then you've got a little uh, kind of, well, eyelet. So you lift that up above it, put it onto the top of the pole, and then it attaches it like we see here. That way it stops it kind of flexing down. And it doesn't really matter which way you work, you can kind of go from left to right, center to right, whatever, however you feel for it. Again, what you can do by staking it in the ground via the spike, it just gives a bit more sort of, uh, sort of structure of straight away down the bottom. And as you can see, you can kind of, one person can pitch this quite happily on their own. But you haven't got a sort of the faff of holding poles or sort of moving up to one, tensioning another. And again, you've got a much better seal throughout the point. And also what you find as well is you haven't got any internal guy ropes with this point. So you have got almost like a complete enclosure. So straight away from off the bat, it means that, you know, you can utilize the internal space without having to worry about guide points coming in everywhere. One thing I'll say, if you lift the fabric up a little bit when you put the eyelet on, it does make life a bit easier getting that tension on that point. And last but not least, yeah, we'll take that out a little bit more, I think. Through the sleeve. 
in the ground on the top. Wicked, jobs are good in. Now what I'm going to do is kind of go around sort of the bag, the base if you will, and just kind of peg that nice and firmly. And we can also do the guide points kind of at the same time. With the end panels, you tend to have two guide points. So you want one sort of tensioning it back towards where you're coming from. Uh, and then the other one tensioning it outways. It's just so, because the end hasn't got the structure of uh, a panel next to it, you find it just needs a little bit more assistance. You don't want to kind of over tension the guide points. The more point is it to stop it going backwards. So you haven't got to start sort of really kind of lashing it down an awful lot. Again, you can kind of adjust it as you see fit. So you want to get a little bit more tension on here or there. Pop it down, put it out, and you're ready to go again. Get a bit of tension on there. Jobs are good in. If you wanted, you can also get some additional guy ropes, which I'd probably recommend, and you can almost come off these hinging points here. It just really, because of that frame, it stops it from popping in. It's going to take an awful lot of force to do that, um, but it's better to probably be overly cautious than under cautious, I'd say. And that would actually help to give it a lot more kind of structural strength as well. But as you can see, you can pitch the whole thing in sort of around about sort of two minutes-esque. And it gives you a bit more of a flexibility in the point. Other things to mention is the fact that you've got a beading on here as well. So in theory, if you wanted to kind of put two windbreaks together, you could do. In theory, actually, you could even put a pronto, i.e. a smaller version, with a larger. Each panel itself is around about sort of one meter thirty. Again, so it kind of gives you the flexibility that you can have a nice span. You can either make that sort of dead square. So it's in one big long line. In that case, you probably would need additional guide points to tension it backways, just as a, as a solid windbreak. But having this kind of curved arc, naturally then balances off one another, so it sort of sits a bit nicer. But as you can see, simple to put up, quite easy. You've got two nice big kind of window panels located in, and you can put your furniture right up to the front. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of pitching it, simple and easy, but then uh, let's move on to the packing away. So now we're going to pack the windbreak away and it's basically the same process we just saw a minute ago, just in reverse. So what I would probably do again, depends on sort of weather conditions, uh, I would probably start by taking maybe the guide points off first, but I'll tell you what we'll do, the opposite, we'll do the bottom first, or actually work around as we go. Again, nice day, different scenario. So we can just kind of unpeg it all nice and quickly. And there's no real hardship with sort of feeding poles through or standing things up. Just a, a single upright pole is quite simple, just to sort of slot in after the afterthought. And that's kind of the joys of it, you know, it means that in theory, you could take away something like this down to the beach because you've got a bit more coverage. It sits a bit lower to the ground than your traditional wind brakes as well, because it's almost got tension down to it. So once we kind of got in here, I always find it easier, like I said, when we did for pitching, is to lay it flat. So what we'll do first and foremost is take the poles out so we can do that. With the poles, again, if you lift, I tend to lift it off the ground to make sure it's out the ground, lift the material up, that gives you a bit more play that you can just take that guide, that little kind of guide line up over the pole. That means that then slides out quite easily. So again, make sure it's out the ground, perfect. Take the material up. That comes off. That comes out. It's one of those things, the more and more you do it, the easier and easier it becomes. When you're putting the poles in the actual bag, I would recommend making sure that the spike end is facing up, not in the base. That way you're sort of not worrying about putting a, a nice hole into the base of the windbreak. All right, go on now. So again, out the ground, up the car, out the ground, up the car, off the island. 
You always find the corner ones are worse because they've got two guard lines going through the eyelet. So what you find is it just needs a little bit more manipulation to get it out. Ooh, you'll be in the right pain in the barrier, aren't you? There we go, now we're talking. Right, so once we get to this point here, like I said, I just want to lay it all flat. So we'll lay that all flat. Now you want, kind of want to almost tension it on one or two points just to kind of hold it in place. So if I sort of gently pop it up like so, you almost need like three points contact. So one in the, in the corner, one out on there. It's just enough to get a little bit up a little bit. Perfect. Wicked. Then if you grab the hubs, be careful of not to trap your fingers in the point. I usually grab it from the pole itself and bring it in like a little concertina flame. Once you're in this position here, I would normally utilize the guide points and be a bit lazy and just kind of wrap that around and that will kind of hold it nice and tight. Meaning you can get it back in the bag a little bit easier. Bum, bum, bum. And you know, it's for something that's no bigger than kind of a chair, but the versatility that's quick and easy to put up and you're a bit more thoroughness and you can add on to it. It's really quite nice. And that's all we want really these days is something that's just quicker and easier. And we haven't got to worry about, we can chuck in the back of the van or car or tent or whatever you're camping or in. Uh, and it just makes it a bit more simplistic. So yeah, that's kind of our little uh, pitching video on the Pronto windbreak. If you want more information about the product itself, you can check in the link below. It'll take you directly to the page. We've got all the videos located with the product as well as the current pricing, sizing, spec of it all. But uh, yeah, that's kind of a little pitching video on the Pronto. Feel free to let us know what you think in the comments below uh, or, like I said, follow us on our YouTube channel. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you again soon.